Have you ever wondered about the origins of life in the universe? What if I told you that the Bible, specifically the book of Genesis, provides profound answers? We embark on this journey with the book of Genesis, the inaugural book of the Bible. It's more than a mere preface to the rest of this sacred text. Genesis is a comprehensive account of the history of the earth, spanning from the moment of creation itself, right up to the time of Joseph and his brothers in Egypt. It paints a vivid picture of the initial stages of our world, our humanity, and our divine connection. Genesis is not just about the beginnings of the universe or mankind, it delves into the genesis of significant elements of our existence. It deciphers the origin of marriage, presenting it as a divine institution, not a man-made construct. It explores the inception of sin and death, two realities that we grapple with daily. But most importantly, it unveils God's plan of redemption, a divine blueprint to restore humanity to its original state of grace. The role of Genesis extends beyond a historical or theological narrative. It is foundational to our understanding of reality. It sets the parameters of living on God's earth, shaping our worldview, and guiding our interactions with the world around us. It's a beacon that navigates us through the complexities of life, shedding light on our purpose and our place in the grand scheme of things. Genesis is a testament to the eternal wisdom embodied in the Bible. It's a mirror reflecting the divine plan, a roadmap guiding us through the labyrinth of life and a compass pointing us towards the true north of divine truth. It's the genesis of all things, the beginning that sets the stage for the rest of the biblical narrative. So as we delve deeper into the various scenes of this divine drama, we will encounter profound truths, timeless wisdom, and divine revelations that have the power to transform our lives. Through this journey, we will not only understand the origins of life and the universe, but also discover our own genesis, our own beginnings, and our unique role in this grand cosmic design. Genesis sets the foundation of our understanding of reality and the parameters of living on God's earth. Genesis, being the basis for major biblical doctrines and the Christian worldview, carries immense credibility. One of the key factors that add to the credibility of Genesis is the evidence that supports Moses as its author. It is widely held that Moses penned Genesis during the wilderness wanderings after the Jews left Egypt. This conclusion is not merely a product of tradition or conjecture, but is supported by substantial internal and external evidence including references within the Pentateuch itself, and corroborative historical data. Moving on, the book of Genesis provides a straightforward account of creation that refutes other cultures' creation myths. Instead of a chaotic and arbitrary universe, Genesis presents us with a universe that was purposefully designed and exquisitely ordered by an all-powerful creator. From the heavens and the earth to every living creature, Everything was meticulously crafted in a specific order, over a period of six literal days. This is unequivocally stated in Genesis, leaving no room for misinterpretation or ambiguity. The concept of a six-day creation is another significant aspect that underscores the credibility of Genesis. The language used in the biblical text is clear and explicit. God created everything in six literal days. This is not a poetic or metaphorical assertion, but a factual statement that echoes throughout the scriptures. The genealogies in Genesis, which trace the lineage of humanity from Adam and Eve, further support this timeline. It's important to note that the credibility of Genesis doesn't just rest on what it affirms, but also on what it refutes. Genesis debunks the gap theory, which suggests a gap between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2. The text provides a consecutive account of creation, without any suggestion of a gap or interruption. Genesis gives us a clear, unambiguous account of creation, bolstering its credibility. Genesis 3 marks a significant event, the fall of mankind and the beginning of God's plan of redemption. In this pivotal scene, we witness the first act of human disobedience, a choice that will forever alter the course of history. The Garden of Eden, once a haven of peace and harmony, becomes the stage for the first great drama of humanity. It's here that Eve, beguiled by the cunning serpent, tastes the forbidden fruit, 
a decision that ushers in the era of sin and death. But this is not just a story of temptation and fall. It's a story of choice and consequence, an echo of a universal truth that our actions have repercussions. Eve's choice, influenced by the serpent's deceit, led not only to her downfall but also to the fall of Adam and, consequently, all of mankind. Yet in the midst of this tragic narrative, a glimmer of hope emerges. Even as God pronounces judgment, He extends His mercy. The fall of mankind, as lamentable as it was, marked the genesis of God's plan for redemption. This is the first glimpse of the Gospel in the Bible, the beginning of a divine plan that would culminate in the ultimate sacrifice of God's own Son. The Gospel, in its essence, is deeply rooted in Genesis. It's a testament to God's unfailing love for His creation, a love so profound that He would go to extraordinary lengths to restore the broken relationship. The fall of mankind was not the end. It was the beginning of a long journey towards redemption, a journey that would lead to the cross. Genesis 3 is not just a chapter in a book. It's a story that resonates with us even today, reminding us of our human frailty, but also of God's enduring grace. It's a story that sets the stage for the greatest love story ever told, the story of God's relentless pursuit of His people. In the midst of mankind's rebellion, Genesis reveals God's redemptive plan. Genesis, like all scriptures, is subject to interpretation, but it is crucial to interpret it based on scripture itself and not outside influences. Let's delve into this a bit deeper. You see, differing interpretations of Genesis often arise from external ideas and beliefs. These influences may come from cultural norms, scientific theories, or even personal biases. And while it's natural for our worldviews to shape how we perceive texts, it's critical when reading Genesis to let the scripture speak for itself. Why, you ask? Because Genesis is not just a narrative, it's a cornerstone of the Christian worldview. It provides the foundation for major biblical doctrines and establishes the parameters of living on God's earth. It's in Genesis that we learn of the divine origin of marriage, the introduction of sin and death into the world, and God's plan of redemption for humanity. Genesis also stands firmly against the idea of human evolution. The book provides a straightforward account of creation, stating that God created everything in six literal days. This refutes the evolutionary view that humans evolved over millions of years. The genealogies in Genesis further underscore this, leaving no room for gaps or reinterpretations. But perhaps most importantly, Genesis underscores the importance of interpreting Scripture with Scripture. Rather than allowing outside influences to shape our understanding of the Bible, we should let the Bible shape our understanding of the world. If we approach Genesis with an open mind and a humble heart, we can see the world as God intended us to see it. In conclusion, Genesis is more than a historical account or a collection of stories. It's a lens through which we can view the world and a guide that can help us navigate life. It's the foundation upon which a proper Christian worldview is built. And despite various external reinterpretations, Genesis stands firm, unshaken, and unaltered. Genesis is the foundation for a proper Christian worldview, and it stands firm against external reinterpretations. Genesis is not just about creation and fall. It's also about the benevolence and affection of God. As we delve into the fifth scene of our exploration of Genesis, we come face to face with a God who is not just a mighty creator, but also a loving Father, full of benevolence and affection. The book of Genesis paints a vivid picture of God's benevolence, a term that essentially means goodwill and kindness. This can be seen in the way He provides for His creation. From the lush, life-sustaining Garden of Eden, to the promise of a prosperous future for Abraham's descendants, God's benevolence shines through every page. But it's not just about the physical provisions. God's greatest act of benevolence in Genesis is perhaps His promise of redemption, a promise that sets the stage for the entire biblical narrative of salvation. In the midst of humanity's rebellion and disobedience, God's affection remains unwavering. Take a moment to consider the story of Adam and Eve. After their fall, God could have abandoned them, but He didn't. Instead, He made garments of skin to cover them, a poignant picture of His enduring affection. 
or consider the story of Noah. In a world corrupted by sin, God found favor in Noah and saved him and his family from the devastating flood, a testament to his steadfast love. But here's the beautiful part. God's benevolence and affection are not confined to the pages of Genesis. They are not just historical attributes, but timeless truths that apply to us today. In our world marred by pain, suffering, and uncertainty, the benevolent God of Genesis continues to provide, protect, and promise. His affection for us remains the same, unwavering and unchanging, offering comfort and hope amidst life's storms. In essence, Genesis is not just a story of creation, fall, and redemption. It's a love story, the story of a benevolent God who cares deeply for His creation. It's about a God whose affection transcends time and space, reaching out to touch each one of us in our unique situations. Through Genesis, we see a God who is not just a creator but a loving and benevolent Father. The New Testament authors had a clear view on Genesis and so should we. Their understanding of Genesis was not incidental or secondary, but rather, it was integral to their interpretation of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Consider how the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, draws a direct line from the disobedience of Adam in Genesis to the redemptive work of Christ. He writes, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. This pivotal understanding of sin's origin and its universal implications is rooted deeply in Genesis. Another New Testament author, the Apostle John, begins his gospel with an echo of Genesis. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John's opening verses are a profound reiteration of Genesis's declaration of God as the Creator, further affirming the foundational importance of Genesis. The author of Hebrews also draws heavily from Genesis. In the 11th chapter, he references the faith of Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, all characters from Genesis, illustrating the enduring relevance of their stories to the Christian faith. From these examples, it becomes evident that understanding Genesis is not a matter of historical curiosity. Instead, it is a matter of theological necessity. The New Testament authors saw Genesis as the springboard for the entire biblical narrative, setting the stage for God's redemptive plan for humanity, culminating in Christ. We can confidently say that Genesis, as seen through the eyes of the New Testament authors, is not merely a collection of ancient tales. It is a fundamental piece of the Christian worldview, providing an essential context for understanding God's interaction with humanity. Genesis, as seen through the eyes of the New Testament authors, remains a vital part of understanding our faith. Why is Genesis so important, you may ask? Well, that's what we're going to hone in on in this segment. Genesis is not just a book. It is the bedrock of our understanding, the foundation upon which our worldview, our understanding of God and our faith are built. It is the root of our tree of knowledge, the launch pad for our spiritual journey. The importance of Genesis cannot be overstated. Let's take a moment to revisit the key points we've discussed so far. Genesis, the first book of the Bible, provides a comprehensive account of the origin of all things. It is a historical record that traces the history of the earth from creation to the time of Joseph and his brothers in Egypt. It addresses the origin of marriage, sin, death, and God's plan of redemption. It provides a clear account of creation and refutes other cultures' creation myths. Genesis is also the backbone of major biblical doctrines and the Christian worldview. It establishes the basic parameters of living on God's earth. It serves as a guide, a compass pointing us towards the truth. It gives us a framework to understand our world, our lives, and our purpose. The book of Genesis is also a testament to God's unfailing love and benevolence. From the Garden of Eden to the trials of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God's affection and benevolence are evident throughout. Even in the face of human rebellion and sin, God's love remains steadfast. Moreover, Genesis is a crucial part of the New Testament. The authors of the New Testament frequently refer back to Genesis, affirming its credibility and its critical role in the grand narrative of God's plan. Understanding Genesis is essential to understanding the rest of the Bible. It sets the stage, introduces the main characters, 
and outlines the central themes that will be developed throughout the rest of the biblical narrative. In essence, Genesis is the cornerstone of our faith. It is where we find our first glimpse of God, our initial understanding of His nature, His power, His love. It is where we first encounter humanity, in all its glory and its failings. It is where we first learn of sin and redemption, of God's promise of salvation. So why is Genesis so important? Because without it we would lack the foundational understanding necessary to comprehend the rest of the Bible, to grasp the depth of God's love, and to fully appreciate the magnitude of His plan for redemption. Genesis is not just the beginning of the Bible, it is the beginning of our understanding of God, life, and the universe. So let us continue to dive into its depths, to explore its truths, and to seek the wisdom it imparts.